Guys, what is going up? Welcome back to the best investing money management channel on YouTube. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about the top stocks under $25. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And overall, I hope you guys get something of value out of this video. And if you guys do hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, concerns, make sure you ask them down below. And if you want to learn more about investing in the market, make sure you guys check out my course. Also, guys, we did just drop a whole bunch of merch. So make sure you guys check that out too. I'll put all the links down below so you guys can check it out. So moving on to stock number one is ticker symbol F. Now we all know this stock as being Ford Motor Company. Now looking at the past year, you can see this thing has had great growth, outperforming all those indexes, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500. You can see it has lows here at about $11.13, highs up here at 25, giving a return of about 134 percent which is really really good not to mention guys we did get a little bit of sell-off down to about 18 dollars, so it's still at about a 61 percent return which is fantastic now one thing you may you know look at ford stock and realize is it does have this tendency to use this yellow line here as support so you guys can see it hits it once twice almost three times in here every single time we get a lot of buying pressure near and around that so you can see it popped up hit $25 and then we had a decent fall where the stock fell about 30%. Hit that 200 moving average line and has just been consolidating. So right now I really think this represents a good opportunity to pick up a couple of shares, a couple of, shares of Ford because they are in one of the top growing sectors, autonomous and electric vehicles. The company over the past year has been growing at a great rate. They've been paying off a lot of their long-term debt and the overall outlook is really, really strong. They have way more demand than supply, causing really these cars to skyrocket in value. A lot of used cars recently have, have been selling for more than new cars because they can't get new cars. The issue right now with Ford is their chips, right? The chips that actually make a car their car because all the cars nowadays are electronic, they're having a problem getting. And I definitely think that's gonna be more of a short-term um, issue, but definitely I would highly recommend picking up a couple of shares of Ford. Now moving on to stock number two is NEO. Now NEO is like the Tesla of China. The They're an electric car manufacturer based out of China. The company is very, very volatile. With volatility brings growth. Now you can see the stock was trading at about $56, sold off over the past year to 19 bucks, really established very strong support near and around there. But if we go ahead and we go to the three year chart, you can see we had that great upward trend, which is fantastic. Anytime a stock pops up from $2 to $67, giving you a return of over 2,621%, you're gonna have sell off, you're gonna have volatility. And that's what we've seen, right? Pretty much right now, you know, Neo is having a lot of trouble, just like all the other car manufacturers are of supply chain, they're having development problems, they're they're doing very well on deliveries. But the issue right now is, is that. Um, so you can see right now from the highs, we did get a sell off of right at about 63%, very similar to Ford, to be honest, and it is using that moving average line as some support. So you can see it hit it, we did get bought, bought up there, and now it's just consolidating near and around there. So I definitely think NEO is a good stock. For this one, it's gonna be high, you know, a higher risk than a company like Ford. Um, but what, what comes with risk is reward. So moving on to stock number three is not a traditional stock. This is what we call a REIT. So it's ticker symbol NLY. The company goes out, they buy a whole bunch of fantastic real estate. And as these tenants and you know their, their renters pay, you guys get a little bit of that money. You can see during this March crash, the stock really fell down hard, fell, falling about 60% in value. Did get bought up relatively quick. And right now, yes, we are on that downward trend, but the biggest value for a stock like this would be these dividends. You're gonna be getting about 22 cents a quarter for a stock that's only $7.11. So I definitely think that's where you're gonna be making most of your money off this one. If for me, if I was gonna go heavy into something like this, I would pretty much want it to be under about six bucks. So it definitely has a little room to sell off more before I would go heavy into it, but definitely one to at least keep on watch for you know this upcoming uh, month or so. So stock number four is Palantir. Now we all know Palantir, they're a software company. They have a whole bunch of 
um, deals with like the U.S. Army, all all that stuff. You can see the stock went from about nine dollars all the way up to forty five. Consolidated for a year, resistance at about twenty eight. More support here at about nineteen to twenty dollars. Right in that range, we have that tendency. Stock fell off all the way down to eleven dollars a share. Palantir, yes, the the issue they're having is revenue right now they're having a little hard time they did secure a whole bunch of contracts uh one for like 300 million dollars um but overall i definitely think this is one to at least keep on watch they're in software they're in data they're not going anywhere anytime soon a good company to you know at least keep on watch uh for me i definitely think that right now you can see it's severely undervalued on the rsi every time you know this stock peaks down here this represents undervalued it represents a lot of selling pressure so given that we've had these tendencies to see volatility i definitely think we'll see it see a spike back up within the next couple of weeks but some a company like this higher growth for sure uh, higher risk as well stock number five is SoFi. Now this one is probably my bread and butter. This is one of my favorite stocks out there. Given that it's only $11.39, this is an absolute for sale for sale sign. So you can see the stock does have history of trading at about $24 to $28. That represents very strong resistance. So it hits that um, several times and we get selling pressure. So you can see it hits it you know, once, twice, three times selling pressure. Now it does have a lot of support near third pretty much near 13 and under. So that's my buy zone. Anything under 13 is an absolute buy. Right now it's $11.39 um, for a stock that brings in a ton of money. They're doubling users, doubling revenue. And the only issues, there's a lot of competitors right now in this space. I definitely think we will uh, see a lot of growth from this stock. But overall, you know, all these stocks, they're going to have, they're going to have volatility. They're going to have bad news. They're going to have all that stuff. It's very expected when you invest in a growth stock like pretty much all of these. So, but what brings, you know, growth and, you know, these massive returns is holding. The The biggest thing is just getting in on a fair price and don't even look at it. I honestly believe that everybody should have about 5% of their money put into riskier assets. These would be classified as riskier assets. The other 95 should be put away towards, you know, long-term um, S&P 500 blue chip stocks, uh, you know, more value companies because those are going to be, you know, just your bread and butter stocks. Stocks like this is where you have these massive returns, massive volatility, but overall you can make a ton of money off them. Good strategy for all of these would be dollar cost averaging, so you don't have to worry about getting in undervalued, overvalued. You just be consistent with your investments. That's why I use M1 Finance. I'm not you know, sponsored by them or anything like that, but I just think they're a great platform for dollar cost averaging. Um, you just have to be have to be very consistent with your investment and you'll be good, really. So guys, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe. We will see you later. Remember to stay happy, stay positive, and stay safe out there. Take care.